boxer Ken Robinson has the most watched TED Talk of all time. Do schools kill creativity? It was one of the first talks to be posted on TED's website. Take a look. So I want to talk about education, and I want to talk about creativity. My contention is that creativity now is as important in education as literacy, and we should treat it with the same status. That is from nearly a decade ago, and since then it's been viewed, get this, more than 56 million times. Now, he has a new book out that helps parents make sure their children are getting the most out of their education. It is called You, Your Child, and School, and Sir Ken Robinson joins us now. Good to see you. A great pleasure, Vlad. Thank you for having me here. So, why do you think schools kill creativity? I don't think they do it deliberately, and uh, it's, but it is systematic, and it's because of the way the curriculum has become very narrow. It's the obsession with testing and all the constraints that places on teachers and students alike. So here's the thing that I find really interesting. Um, we're in the middle of this college scandal, mm -hmm. right? And you have these very wealthy parents whose children are already privileged paying, in some cases, you know, uh, exorbitant amounts of money to send these kids to some elite universities. Mm -hmm. And then the elite universities aren't really necessarily producing the best and brightest. What's the point of that if it's not going to enable children to be their most creative? Well, you know, there are two things about this. One is that this particular group of people who've been exposed are acting illegally. It's fraud, so it's a criminal case, so that's one thing. But there's a bigger issue, which is the system as a whole is focused, I believe, on the wrong things. There's an obsession now with getting everybody to go to college. There's sort of view that unless you go to college, your life's over. Right. Unless you do a four-year degree, you may as well just give up. So it creates this whole culture of winners and losers, and the whole system of K-12 education has become obsessed with it. That's what all the testing is about, all the SATs, the ACTs, uh, people doing homework. It's all about getting to college. And what this shows is the game is rigged. You know, the dice is loaded here. And, um, and my argument is that there are many other options. Education shouldn't be obsessed like this. There are other routes to success. You don't have to go to a four-year degree. There are all kinds of other programs according to your talents and your interests. So I think this is an opportunity to really have a serious conversation about the whole structure and the focus of this system. Is there a sense, I've often wondered, the United States was founded on this idea that we don't have a class system like in Great Britain. But have our universities in some ways given us a certain type of class system because you cannot for a lot of people a degree from harvard as evidenced by this trial by this case is not the same as a degree from your local state or community university even though the education that you receive may be just as good as a harvard degree well you know i live in america i've lived here for 19 years now and last year i became a citizen so congratulations I, thank you so much yeah. so you know my fellow americans so, <laughs> so i'm <laughs> I'm just saying this. I haven't just kind of flown in, you know, to, to, right. to have a go at the American education system. I live <laughs> here. And, 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 yeah, we heard this, that, that, that there's no class system. There is a class system in America. Of course there's a class system here. It's just not structured in the same sort of way. It doesn't have the same kind of cues. Uh, you know, but it's a system that, that, that the whole system, it, it, it promotes certain type of inequities. There's no question that some people have uh, uh, work at a much greater uh, advantage than others uh, economically and socially. And uh, the education system tends to perpetuate it. It's why these people are bending over backwards to get their kids into the right colleges, because they know it'll get them into spheres of influence, there'll be networking to go on. You know, there's a kind of patronage that passes between families. Mm -hmm. So in, in some ways, implicitly and unconsciously, the system colludes in this class system. Right. And these people are paying to make sure it does it consciously and explicitly. And if schools some, can kill creativity, what about placing a mediocre child into a top school? Because, I, you know, the, 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 for us, from a person of color, my parents are immigrants to this country, mm -hmm. their ad admonitions to me were always, look, if I came home with a C, and I said, well, you know, Billy and Bobby got C's. They'd say, who cares what Billy and Bobby do? You have to be an A student every single time because mediocre kids can have a path towards success and you can't. And when I remember when I was in high, in high school, I said to my dad, uh, who had gone to Columbia University, I said, can you help me get into Columbia? He said, why would I do that? They only take A students. You're not an A student. <laughs> no, I'm not going to embarrass yeah. myself. <laughs> but you see, this is part of the issue, isn't it? The, even the language you use, uh, like this, about mediocre kids, I mean, who's to say whether kids are mediocre? And what are they mediocre at? I know all kinds of people who don't do particularly well in the conventional academic work, not because they're not bright, but because they're bright at other things. They're brilliantly good at other things. And we need people who are brilliant at all kinds of things, not just people who excel in this particular race that we've set up, that you have to be able to get into a good college to do academic work.
academic work is important. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I used to be a university professor. You know, I like academic work. But there are all kinds of skills and talents that people have which are disguised by this particular preoccupation. So I always resist this idea of people being mediocre or great. People are good at certain things and not good at other things. There's a profile of talents here. But also people are starting this race on a very different set of blocks. You know, some people are coming from very different uh, situations. They may uh, have, you know, a, a fractured home life. They may be living in a, a poor neighborhood, a crime-ridden neighborhood. These are issues you, you simply can't discount in terms of what people face and succeed. And this is, of course, one of the big issues now that some kids uh, are getting into college because they're being paying for this advantage. Right. And the very people paying for it often are the ones who decry the idea of affirmative action to give people who are less privileged you know, an equal playing field. So it's a very complex issue, this, but I, I do think that the preoccupation with college is the keystone. And if we can sh start to shake that loose and open up the system to other talents, other opportunities, and a richer conception of people's talents and abilities and possibilities, the whole country would be better for it. I just have 30 seconds, but let me ask you this. If somebody said, look, that is all well and good, just do the four years in college, you're only in your 20s, you have your whole life ahead of you to explore your creativity, you just need that because everybody has that, and at least you're starting out at the same level to explore your creativity? Well, firstly, uh, four years is a long time in anybody's life, honestly, and they can be, they can be pivotal. I, I should also say, by the way, I am not saying academic work's not creative. I'm not saying the colleges can't be great. There are all kinds of reasons to go to college, but not everybody wants to go to college, and it's not the only gateway to success. But I don't think anybody should say, well, it's only four years. I mean, for all you know, it's the only four years you've got left. Mm -hmm. Good point. Very good to have you here, Sir Ken Robinson. Thank you so much for stopping by. That's a great pleasure, man. Yeah, Thank the you. book is Always. called You, Your Child, and School. Pick it up wherever books are sold. Thank you very much.